Continuing the Mike Gallagher Show, Guy Benson over at Hot Air writes about the latest chapter of Reverend Al Sharpton's battles with the teleprompter. Guy asks if any segment featuring this race-baiting, riot-fomenting, hoax-perpetrating huckster truly qualifies as a palate cleanser. Perhaps not. But Sharpton's fails at MSNBC are a bottomless pit of unintentional hilarity nonetheless. Uh, Here's the latest round from Reverend Al and his TV show on MSNBC. We all know I've had my share of prompter issues. And here's the president (laughs) meeting with a a cola cue. Republicans, Grinches, launching fists full of coal. Copies of the new issue of Charlie Hubda. He also goes by the name Michael Ziha Bilibar. 26-year-old Nina. Phone. Ray Moromano. Honor David Letterman. He died of accidental... uh, uh, as FEMA, Al Qaeda in Yemen. The start of school has been postponed several times. Massive manhood is underway. Who spoke at a white supremacist convention? You look at the hand you dealt with. There are not 60 Republicans after a historic, a, a historic. So when you hear of ISIS now waterboating, I'm all over the map on immigration. Did the New England Patriots cheat to get into the big game? NFL analyst and Hall of Fame player Troy Aikens, uh, the writer slamming President Obama for talking with used to celebrities. What's the latest tonight in Iowa? Well, in Ottawa. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be Ottawa, not Iowa dope. Um, nothing like YouTube videos either. Uh, now, Guy Benson says at Hot Air, some of these flubs can certainly be chalked up to Sharpton's amusing inability to read a teleprompter, which I've done it many times. It's like the easiest thing in the world to do. Trust me, there's nothing. Anybody tells you it's difficult to read a teleprompter, uh, they're an idiot. Uh, maybe that's a little harsh, but trust me, it's very easy. If you can read, you can look up at a box and read the, the scrolling words. Uh, As Benson says, this suggests he's simply ignorant of basic words and facts. This man has his own television show and has managed to worm his way into a position of national prominence and influence. This man has extorted his way into the role of chief Hollywood race monger, slamming this year's Oscar nominations as appalling for being too white and demanding an emergency meeting on the matter. And he's established himself as the Obama White House's go-to man on race. Talk about appalling. Now seems like as good a time as any to remind everyone that Sharpton, who became an FBI informant in the 80s after he was caught on tape with a drug kingpin discussing cocaine deals, owes millions in taxes. Sharpton has regularly sidestepped the sorts of obligations most of us see as inevitable, like taxes, rent, and other bills. Records reviewed by the New York Times shows more than $4.5 million in current state and federal tax liens against him and his for-profit businesses. And though he said in recent interviews that he was paying them down, his balance with the state, at least, has actually grown in recent years. His National Action Network appears to have been sustained for years by not paying federal payroll taxes on its employees. Before you ask, yes, Sharpton is a committed tax fairness warrior who regularly attacked Mitt Romney for not paying his fair share. The man is truly and utterly shameless. So much so, so writes Guy Benson, that he classily dismissed the New York Times report excerpted earlier as a malicious attempt to distract from his important work on matters like Ferguson and the Trayvon Martin case. Vile. Well, he's not only vile, but he's obviously a pretty stupid man.